Hello and welcome back to my channel. Today we are going to talk about how to rescue a sewing machine. That's right, we're going to thrift one. And I was looking for a sewing machine that I could take traveling with me, but here, let's interrupt this with pencils and a project for my brother's new baby rabbit and my grandma's wheat bag, which I have currently going on on the floor. Ignore the glue gun, I was actually sewing it. That's for a bunny. And I wanted to decorate the envelope for sending the project. So. Here's the bag that I also got at the thrift store. I needed something to carry the brand new sewing machine in. The seller told me he had a sewing machine for $5, but it didn't have any of the parts. It didn't have the bed, it didn't have the, the bobbin or the bobbin casing, it was side loading. I didn't know what that meant. It didn't have a power cord. But ironically, this sewing machine fits perfectly in this diesel perfume bag. It was fully functioning in every other way, and I looked at it and I thought, this thing needs me. I have to give this a home. And I couldn't explain it. I had no idea why. But I ended up giving this thing a home, and I googled it and found the actual manual. So here's the Kenmore sewing machine, model 385. It's a Spanish and English version. Once upon a time, this thing ended up being released online, and you can buy it, the actual manual in English. You can also find it in Spanish for free. Spanish English. So here's the sewing machine in its glory. Missing the bed, no tools, but it works once I found the actual power cord. I went to a sewing supply store and it was a guy who repaired sewing machines. The guy ended up selling me the power cord for $35. Here you have the sewing machine in its parts and... I decided to go through this manual and figure out how to use the actual sewing machine so that I could use it while I'm traveling. I wanted to be sewing jersey and knits specifically. I wanted to find a machine that could do straight stitch. Here you have it. Two parts, one casing, one bobbin. The bobbins I had to buy separately, the casing. I went down the street and got it for a less amount. Uh, this was cheaper than the foot pedal. I ended up paying $19 for the bobbin casing. It is very specific. You cannot use any other bobbin casing device in this machine. You have to buy something that has been created for a side loading bobbin. Basically, you have to buy something that's very specific to this machine, and it is discussed at length in the manual as well. Mm hmm Excuse me, we have to have a tea break. It is minus 47 here as I try to record this, as the temperature drops. Actually, that's not true. That's the end goal tonight. Anyway, side-loading bobbin. This is a good project for cold days. It's like the flywheel. It does connect and pick up the thread like most other machines. However, this is where it gets a little bit more complicated because we have to put the bobbin inside the casing and then put it in the machine and thread it separately. This is where the project becomes a bit more complicated. So here you see I have loaded my bobbin. This can be discussed or reviewed using the manual, so I'm not going to cover that for the sake of this video. The bobbin casing clips on and off inside the machine using that little flap I showed earlier, and that long tail has its own location within the machine. So here I put the bobbin inside the casing, pull it around, there is a side flap that the thread must thread underneath. Excuse the editing. So here you see I've got thread pointed out, ready to be loaded around the casing. 
it's slightly in depth, but it does create, uh, it is slightly in depth, but does require some finesse. So here you pull it around, then you pull it up and back, and it just slides under that silver thumb of a flap sitting out there. Then you turn the casing around, and you can see it's nice and snug. This becomes the tricky part where we have to take our own initiative to bring the thread up from the bottom underneath the machine. Here I've loaded some 100 year old or so coats sewing thread. It's actually probably about 50 years old. I did get it at the same thrift store that the machine actually came from. The thread itself, the blue thread is underneath, the brown thread is on top just so you can see the difference, but you see the flywheel spinning underneath as I bring the needle up and down, and the blue thread I have draped along the side of the machine, out the side of the presser plate, and the brown thread has now joined it out the back of the machine. Based on what the manual described, I have to take the needle down, catch with the blue thread using the brown thread, bring the needle back up, and use tweezers or pliers to pull the thread out towards the back of the machine, making sure that I'm pulling the bobbin thread out towards the back of the machine. This way, it is then officially fed up above the feed dogs and out the back of the machine. If you're a seamstress, you understand these terms. Basically, I'm going down and bringing the blue thread up because it doesn't thread like some other machines that we've seen. So here I'm using tweezers from Dollar Tree. I grab the blue thread, pull it out, and it comes up the same location where the brown thread goes down to sew. This means you have successfully loaded your side loading bobbin machine. Here you can again see the tweezers that I use, and then the full proper test is to sew something. So here I have a tiny tree Christmas decoration. It's going to be a tiny stuffed puffed Christmas ornament. It's an actual tree itself. I did a very quick stitch on it and now it's time to cut the threads. Well, so I'm just adding both to the seaming. It, the tree will be turned inside out and I will be stuffing this thing and then hand sewing the closure. But basically, this machine is working. This was a machine that was doomed to the thrift store clutter and essentially the garbage pile. This machine had no future. Nobody was gonna take it home and sew things for their grandchildren with it. It had no home. It was out in the cold. Someone abandoned it. And frankly, I felt very attached to it the moment that I found out that someone had left it and that the store was selling it for only $5 because we all know machines are worth more than that. Anyway. This is the oil I used, it's by Drit. Here is my serger. That could be featured at another time with the MacGyver patterns I have on the floor, also thrifted. This is a jacket that I'm working on, tailoring it inside out because there's so many seams to it, it is destined to fit right. <laughs> I did get it at a thrift store. And alas, another quick sew pattern. I do not sew from patterns hardly ever, but I do have some, and this is a project that has been waiting for me for, if you can believe it, three years. So I'm not sure which one of these I'm going to make, but it is on the pile. And along with other swimwear and tailoring work and motivational quotes that I keep on my desk while I sew and different photos for inspiration of projects that I need to make in the future, all kinds of things. The other thing I need to mention is this machine is the one that I use exclusively for a lot of my projects. This machine was inherited by someone who sews quadruple the amount that I sew. And bless her soul, it was sent to me from her family members, which are my family members through extended family. Um, the moral of this story is that you should never give up on a sewing machine if you find it in a sewing store unless you see actual damage this thing can have new life. Please know 
Thrift stores are not a place of junk. Often these stores are trying to make a profit. They will not sell broken items. Usually the items have already been tested if all the parts have come in order to plug it in and make it work. Please, 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 if you need sewing supplies, consider the thrift stores. You would not believe the hidden gems that I have found and it would blow your mind as to the prices that I usually find on these things and with a little bit of elbow grease and effort you can rescue a sewing machine and make a new best friend because let's let's be honest those of us that sew a lot and thrift our sewing machines become our best friend as far as it's our partner in crime when we're working on projects.